I don't think people get it. I don't think people get what this is existentially, ontologically, empirically. I think like most people operate under the preconceived notion of some sort of fallacy or irrational belief. You know, the fact that we're just particles comporting to the fundamental forces of nature. And that's it. You know, nothing more, nothing less. There isn't some divinely ordained, nothing's divinely ordained. There is no cosmic justice. The universe doesn't revolve around one species of primate. This all happened because of chance. You know? I don't think people understand that. I don't think they quite comprehend that. Fundamentally. Everything doesn't happen for a reason. There isn't some divine retribution. You know? The universe, the cosmos, doesn't have any intrinsic purpose, meaning, or value. Nothing matters, and you're gonna die. And you're not gonna die because of some inherent essentialist purpose or meaning or reason. No, you're gonna die because you're made of molecules that comport to the fundamental forces of nature and at the making at the time of the making of this video we haven't yet found a way to fully prevent the process of death to the homo sapien species that's why not because of well you gotta die you know god said you gotta die there is no fucking god Oops, had to rip that band-aid off. Just admit that your entire conscious awareness and perception is nothing more than the emergent property of particles arranged in a certain configuration. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. There isn't some intrinsic inherent you. There is no soul, you know? That shit's not real. Everything about your perception, your consciousness, and your awareness is a byproduct of the brain, which is nothing more than a biological machine made up of chemicals, particles, atoms, you know? science there is no such thing as good and bad right or wrong you know they're just concepts made up by humans because we're a social species that evolved in this specific way you know that's it nothing more nothing more. The only thing, the only concept that is actually absolute are the logical absolutes. You know, the laws of logic. Identity, non-contradiction, and excluded middle. That's it. You know? None of this other woo, quackery, pseudoscience, bullshit that you people blabber on and spew out you know all of this bullshit that you run around blabbering about and you hold near and dear to your heart oh yeah you don't fucking you know you feel something in your heart you should probably get that checked out because your heart pumps blood that's what it does nothing more nothing less 
You don't feel some sort of, oh, I feel warm, fuzzy feelings in my heart. I, I feel it in my heart. Oh, man, that's coming from your brain, pal. It's coming from your brain, buddy. The whole experience. You and your entirety. In your entirety. It's a product of the brain. A functioning brain. When you kill that brain, when that brain ceases to function, you cease to exist. You as you know it, as you identify, ceases to exist. Now that I established that, I'm not saying that you can't enjoy this experience. No, I'm not saying that. I'm aware of the fact that we are bipedal primates that evolve in such a way that certain stimuli makes us feel a certain way, you know, enjoyment, pleasure, that sort of thing. And I'm not denying that. What I'm saying is to live under the pretenses under the preconceived notion of anything other than this is intrinsically meaningless would be incorrect. That's all I'm saying. With all that being said, let's shatter some of these preconceived notions. You know, there's this preconceived notion of loser. You know, a loser. You're a loser. 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 You're a loser. You're a loser. You know. Poor people are losers. Homeless people are losers. People that live with their parents are losers. People that use drugs are losers. I'm just sitting there thinking like. How the fuck can you lose something? that you're not even playing. How, how the fuck can you lose when you never asked to play? You know? Loser. You know, that that is just, that's interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware that this was a game. You know, I seem to forget when I put my 25 cents into the machine, you know? I didn't I didn't press start. I didn't sign a contract. I didn't agree to any terms and conditions. Hmm. I wasn't aware that this was a game. I, I wasn't aware of that. Can, can you can you refresh my memory? Can you jog my memory? I, 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 I didn't I didn't I don't believe I obliged. I don't I don't believe I agreed to this. I never asked for this shit. I didn't ask to be born. No one asks to be born. But you're somehow subjugated to some sort of social construct, some sort of unspoken rule. You know? A loser. Yeah. A loser. I'm a loser. And you're a winner? I mean, what? you're a fucking winner, right? Yeah, because the stupid fucking idiot, the miserable idiot who spends their only life being a work stiff at a job that they hate is a winner. Yeah. Congratulations, buddy. You dedicate your life to money and you barely have any of that. And that concept is stupid. Hmm. I'm a loser and you're a winner. <clears throat> I bust my ass, I work hard. You want a cookie, bitch? Then go ahead and pat yourself on the back. You're a champ, man, you're a legend. You know, that's funny, it's funny because this whole entire system, this whole entire thing is predicated off 
of the prerequisite, the prerequisite presumption that you care, that you care about anything, that you care about continuing to exist as if life is some sort of gift. This shit isn't some gift. I don't, I didn't ask for this shit. I'm here. I wasn't here because of, I, because I consented to it. Never consented to this shit, man. Never. Here, out of my will. I'm not here by my will. Even though I, we don't even have free will, right? That's an illusion. So not only did I not consent to exist, I didn't consent to live under capitalism. What is, which is intrinsically, inherently exploitative. Like the system operating and functioning properly is exploitation. And, and just the, you know, we just take this shit like fucking, who gives a shit, you know? Fuck it. You know, the fact that People are so flippant about this shit, so fucking whimsical, haphazard about bringing another being into existence under these conditions is fucking bizarre. That shit is, I mean, I'm flabbergasted. Shit blows my mind. I can't, I, I don't, are you fucking nuts? So you're brought into existence without your consent, against your will, right? And then you're subjugated to these fucking bullshit rules that fuck you over. Like, and then you're, you're judged in a way as if you had some sort of choice in the matter. Like, who the fuck made you the arbiter of anything? You know? That, that, what? And there's this fucking notion that life is precious. Life is a gift. Hey man, if you kill yourself, that's selfish. He's selfish, he killed himself. He commits suicide, he's selfish. Shut the fuck up, motherfucking. Yeah, yeah, I'm selfish. If I kill myself, if I decide, if I if I decide I don't want to I don't want to do this anymore, that I want to stop doing something that I didn't consent to do in the first place, I'm selfish, motherfucker. Bringing someone into existence is the most selfish thing you can do. Hey man, I'm giving them the gift of life. They didn't exist. They didn't exist before. But now that they do exist, they're now subjugated. They're subject to all of this. Laws of nature, pain, all of that shit. But come on. Come the fuck on. Just. Man, that's selfish. To kill yourself, that's selfish. He killed himself. He's selfish. You selfish if you kill yourself. Motherfucker, for you to say that is selfish. You don't you don't experience what they experience. For you to say that, you're just disregarding that person's opinion about their own life. Their experiences, their feelings, their consent. You just disregarded that, all of that, to stroke your own ego. Just for a fucking ego stroke. Yeah, man. Which what I say. How I personally feel I can dictate that over other people's life. Because I'm special. <laughs> fucking jackass. So if I want to 
withdraw myself from something that I didn't consent to that selfish. Okay, okay. So it's funny, like the basically the the consensus assumption is that you're born, you're gonna suffer, you know, you're gonna suffer. And that's just what it's gonna be, you know. You're gonna work, you're gonna struggle, and you're gonna die. Like that. These motherfuckers act like the entire bid is fucking rainbow fucking sparkles and glitter and fucking kumbaya hunky dory fucking wonderland like act like the entire bid the entire duration isn't fucking suffering agony fucking starvation hunger struggle like th that's the that's the life for the overwhelming majority of all living creatures on this fucking planet for all living beings that that is literally the overwhelming majority of the duration of their entire existence and you just think that's you think oh man hey man you gotta do it man hey man you're born you didn't ask for this shit but hey man you gotta take that hit man you just hit man you gonna take that you gonna take that on the chin man fuck it man you gotta take that on the, all that suffering, all that pain, take it on the chin, suck it up, take it like a man, you know, walk it off, you know, you gotta do it, man, because I say so, you know, I, I, I'm special, I'm important, I, whatever I say, you know, I can dictate on, I can dictate that on you, because, you know, I'm the man for some reason, I'm superior for some reason, man, and you gotta do it, man. You gotta do, but you know, the fact that the universe has no intrinsic or inherent value or purpose or meaning—that is liberating. That's liberating to me, you know. Because when I'm presented with this, you know, go to school, work, pay bills, and die, I'm like, why would I do that? When I can do literally anything else. I don't get. What I don't get is that, you know, you know, most of these people they act like they care, you know. But their actions are inconsistent with what they say. It's like you have a dumb motherfucker going to a fucking fucking drive through fast food place talking about fucking like literally like getting seriously butthurt like genuinely angry about some dumb shit like they put mustard on my burger hey hey they put mustard on my burger can, can I can, hey y'all put mustard on my burger I, I, I ain't want no mustard I want ketchup I want ketchup y'all put mustard on my burger y'all put mustard on my burger come on man yep come on man y'all put mustard on my burger man can I speak to manager Okay. Uh, sir, ma'am, what's the problem? Y'all put myself on my burger. I speak the corporate. I, I, I speak the corporate. Sir, ma'am, what is the problem? Y'all put myself on my burger. Sir, ma'am, do you not realize that I, rich guy in a suit, are destroying the planet? I am destroying the planet. And you care about mustard on a fucking hamburger? Y'all put mustard on my burger. Okay, jackass. Bitch, the planet is incinerating. And you worrying about trite minut- but fucking minutiny. Trite bullshit. I put fucking, fucking sauce on my fucking ribs. I wanted it fucking dry. I wanted it plain. You put fucking sauce on it. Freaking sauce on my freaking rib. 
I put damn sauce on my fucking burger. I wanted it freaking plain. I'm fucking ah, ah. Fucking man, fucking bullshit, man. Like, motherfucker, you don't have no life purpose. Like, that's a bullshit notion. Oh, my purpose in life is to do this. So once you accomplish it, now what? Like that that was your life's purpose. Now you you just you still living in and it's like no shit. No shit that's bullshit. Like I don't know what type of what kind of Disney Hallmark movies you've been watching, but uh this ain't that. That's bullshit. The fuck? Like like what the fuck do you what the fuck did you expect like what what the fuck did you, did you think like fucking fireworks gonna start fucking shooting and fucking you gonna fucking walk away in the sunset then the screen's gonna fade to black and the fucking credits gonna gonna start rolling like the fuck like none of this shit matters like becoming the president has the same inherent intrinsic value as smoking crack on a bike you know death isn't inherently inevitable but you know at the same time neither is being born you know the this notion that people are just so eager to just bring kids into this world to bring more humans into this world and they're just so flipping about it they're just yeah you know i'm just gonna go have a kid you know i'm gonna have four or five kids you know who gives a shit and i i'm just thinking like how could you look at the world in its current state and just just think yeah i'm gonna bring another sentient conscious human to live and endure the intrinsic inherent suffering that is existence you know that, that is as i think i think bringing having kids and bring kids into this world you know i think that's possibly one of the most selfish and immoral things you can do you know, sometimes, more often than not, you know, it is better to have never been. You know, because the, the reasoning that I see a lot of people that use to bring kids into this into this world, you know, oh, you know, give a kid a good life, but you're just being naive because you're you obviously. Or just ignoring all the other aspects of you know living under capitalism you know and you're, you're giving a, a life to something that doesn't exist but you're also subjecting them to all the cons and the negatives of life of existence you know it's like the, the reason why I want to make the world a better place is not to bring more people in it, but for the people that are already here, you know. We're here already against our will, you know. Killing yourself would be an action that, that wouldn't actually be the default. Existing, you that already exist, you continuing to exist is the default. Assuming that, you know, you don't get killed or something else but I don't understand that you know the fact that your parents can just be you know a crackhead your parents could just be a, a drug addict you, you could just be poor just be sick you know have a mental disability no one cares no one cares you can be disabled no one cares poor no one cares you know and just oh fuck it just have more kids the world is literally scorching 
Eh, no one cares. Fake news, you know. Fake news. You know, for the overwhelming majority of the living organisms on this planet, you know, life is suffering. You know, that's that just the way it is. You know, because we we live on this planet, we're being acted upon by physical forces, and that's just the way the fucking cookie crumbles, I guess, man. Uh, you know, thing about it is, you know, me, as an atheist, nihilist, misanthrope, I actually care about progressing humanity, you know, ironically, the thing about it is, a lot of these conservative religious people, they want to see the world go to shit. They want to see the world crumble because they think it's the end times. They think Jesus is coming to save them, you know? And I'm here saying, you know, Jesus doesn't exist. You know, heaven doesn't exist. So let's make this planet, this one life that we know that we have as closest to a heaven, as closest to a utopia as we possibly can via science you know something that demonstrably works empirically works you know progressing humanity that, that's ironic you know the planet is being destroyed and no one cares people are being exploited and no one cares but the thing about it is Humans actually have great attributes. You know, we have great gifts, you know, great attributes. We have opposable thumbs, big brains, bipedalism, you know, we're good endurance runners, you know. We have the capacity for empathy and altruism, you know. But, you know, we, we gave all these things up, you know. There were social species, you know. We, we have the capacity for being in cohesive groups, coming together to solve problems. But we gave all of that up for God. We gave all of that up for money. We gave, we gave all of that up for statism, you know. Those are the big three, you know. God money and government you know religion statism capitalism you know those are the big three god money and government religion capitalism and statism the big three of the most regressive things in human history. That, that's just quite unfortunate. Quite unfortunate. You know, they say scratch a cynic, you'll find a disappointed idealist. You know, that's true, you know. I, I would say that that applies to me. You know, the way I see it is like, yeah, you know, I want to make the, the world a better place, but I just look at it as the, the amount of problems, the pile of problems that are present and not only that but the problems that humans you know give to themselves you know the problems that humans create just by being irrational by being willfully ignorant it's just too much it's so much that it's like I don't think it could you know it would take a massive revamp in the way people think and I you know, the way the trend, it just looks like humans are just being humans. You know, it looks like, a, you know, people that want to make the world a better place are giving humans, you know, too much credit that they don't deserve, you know. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm an anti-natalist. You know, I think that I'm against bringing 
humans into this world. I'm against bringing life into this world. You know, I just, I just don't see it as. I don't know. I just doesn't don't doesn't seem logical to me. Purposefully bringing additional life to become subjugated to to the suffering that is apparent. You know, like the only reason you could do it is selfish. Like I don't see a reason that benefits the actual you know agent that is going to exist you know like i said it sometimes it is better to have never been never been conceived what i don't get is that conservatives regressives you know religious people You hinder, you impede the progress. You, you try to impede the progress of science, impede the progress of humanity. You know, impede the use of, of rationality, skepticism, logic, and reason. But then, like, you use, you try to you attempt to use logic within the pretenses of irrationality I never understood that like you know a fucking magic man magic invisible man in a nightgown spawns man then rips his rib out creates woman talking snakes magic fruit uh, you know Angel spirits, magic. Oh, that that seems legit. But you know what I don't understand is, you know, why would uh, you know, why would God, you know, make, you know, Tuesday? Oh no, why why would God make Sunday? You know, the day of worship instead of Saturday. Or some dumb shit like that. You know, I can't even make up shit that's that stupid. You know, like, to be, to, to have something, to make something that stupid, you would have to sit down and construct. How stupid can I be? You know? You know, I, 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 I just, I don't understand it, you know? You literally pay a guy every Sunday to read a book full of fables. You pay a guy to read mythology, to read a fucking book full of lies, full of things that are factually incorrect. You know, you 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 make these these logical fallacies, these appeal to nature, these appeal to whatever fucking brand of superstitious bullshit you believe in. You know. It's like you don't realize that we as humans, we're perverts. And I'm not just talking about sexual perverts. I'm talking about perversion, actual exploiting something, you know, taking something and using it, you know, bending it to your will, you know, configuring it in a way that you see fit. Now, if we do that with the use of the scientific method, man, there's no telling what we could do. There's no telling. Adopting science as the foundational method that we solve problems with is the key to progressing humanity. I see it no other way. You know, religion and science are irreconcilable. They just are. There is no way to try to make them coexist. It ain't happening. Just not.
You know, I want to abolish anti-intellectualism. You know, it's funny how, you know, God, you know, it's always, you know, God wanted me to do this. God wants us to do this. It's God's will to do this. But you always, you always, I think it's funny how every time, it never fails. It always is the case that God's will coincides with your desires, with the per the individual person's desires. That's funny, right? Interesting. Coincidence? I think not. You know, this is the only form of catharsis I have. This is one of the, one of the few forms of catharsis that I actually have. You know, when people say. You know, you got to do the typical, you know, rat race, horse shit, trap, scam, bullshit. Go to school, you know, go to college, get a job, work for 40 years, then you die. That typical thing. But it's like, why would I do that when I can do literally anything else? You know? Just like you care about fucking your favorite sports team, you care about being an employee of the month. You know, I care about this. You know, you, I care. This is what I care about: progressing humanity, using science, intellectualism, skepticism. I care about that. And I haven't found sufficient evidence that would convince me otherwise, you know. You know, my thing, you know, works. Demonstrable, empirical, researched, reviewed, experimented. repeatedly works that is what I think the sooner that humanity can come to a collective agreement that the scientific method is the most important the most effective way to solve problems to discover facts about the universe that's when we can start making this as close to a utopia as possible that's it you know, what I don't get is why some people think they need to have some sort of post-mortem reward or punishment you know to do good to make the world a better place you don't just do it for its own sake. The reason why I want to make the world a better place is not because of the the promise of a post-mortem reward or the threat of a post-mortem punishment. It's because I realize that we live on this planet, right? As far as I know, we live on this planet, we share space, we are confined by the physical laws of nature. Our actions have consequences. So with that being said, let's make up a framework of what is the most effective way to do things? What is the most ethical way to do things? And it's just that simple. It's, it's nothing more than that. It's just. You know, make the world a better place for the sake of making the world a better place because you live there. And that's it. Funny because these conservatives, these religious people, they they always talk about how they're pro-life. But your your position is actually not pro-life. It's anti-choice. 
Because if you were pro-life, you would be for social safety nets. You would be for, you know, improving the lives of living people. But from your stances, from your positions, you're not for these things. You're just anti-choice. You want to assert your worldview onto other people in a dogmatic fashion. You know, you, so you're saying you'll fight for the rights of an undeveloped fetus and a zygote, a, a clump of cells, but you wouldn't fight for the rights of a living human, you know, a living human child. You don't care about these things. You're saying that life starts at conception. You know, you're willing to give a clump of cells more rights than a living human. You know, you, you're, you don't care about whether these humans starve. You don't care about the conditions in which they live. You just want to assert your way of living, the way you think onto other people. So you would force someone to give birth to a child that they don't want. But when this child is born, you would ridicule and demean people who are on food stamps demean people who are on welfare. You will demean people for wanting pay raises, you know. Demean people that want so better social safety nets, socialized programs, things of that nature. You don't care about sending these people to go fight in wars, to go kill and die in wars. You don't care about that. You know, so I'm, I'm trying to figure out how is that pro-life, you know, or maybe I'm misunderstanding something. Maybe I, maybe I'm just, maybe I, I hit a little bit too much meth, you know, that, that's, that's probably the problem. I smoked a little bit too much meth, you know. <laughs> it's funny. Because, you know, these conservative people, these religious people, they want us to be slaves to our biology. The thing is, we don't have to be slaves to our biology because we have science. You know, this cool, neat thing that uh, actually works, unlike praying, you know, unlike prayers, you know, your thoughts and prayers, you know. You know, prayers do nothing. Think about it. Think about it is. You you say that. You know, abortion, is killing a baby. Abortion is the termination of a pregnancy, and you're saying, "Hey, man, well, it's only you only do it if." Uh, you know, don't do it too late. You do realize that a late term termination of a pregnancy is uh, a C-section. It's a C-section. You know. Abortion. So you just, you're forcing people to live in a way that you dogmatically seem fit. That you personally, you want to, you want to impose your will onto other people. I have a problem with that. I don't give a damn what you personally do. But you cannot impose your will onto other people. I do have a problem with that. So, 
you're saying that the that abortion is just wrong it's immoral so you're saying that a woman or a person that has to carry out a pregnancy caused by rape you're telling me that this person has to take care and accept all of the consequences of giving birth as a result of rape and that child being a constant reminder of the horrific thing that was done to them but we don't even have to take it that far you're telling other people you're telling somebody else that they have to carry out a pregnancy to full term give birth and then take care of a child that they flat out just don't want is you're saying that it's wrong to just I don't want to have a kid you're saying that oh you should have known you had sex <laughs> you just you, you know you gotta deal with the consequences you know you had sex <laughs> this religious traditionalism primitive mindset you know but consenting to sex is not consenting to a pregnancy and consenting to a pregnancy is not consenting to bringing that pregnancy to full term you can change your mind or are you aware of that are you not aware of that that you know you can change your mind that's a thing that's a concept right just so funny man it's like what is what is the thought process i don't i don't get it so you're saying that abortion is wrong because it's killing a baby you know it's a clump of cells but okay so let's in this hypothetical situation then maybe this can help you better understand the flaws in your argument so let's say that you were terminally ill and you needed a host let's use me for an example you needed me as a host you need to be attached to me surgically attached to me as a, to get my nutrients to keep you alive right so the only thing keeping you alive in this predicament, this hypothetical situation, is being attached to me. So if, if I were not attached to you, you would die. Now would you legally, would you say that I have to be subjugated to staying attached to you solely because if I weren't, if we weren't attached, you would die? So, would you subjugate me to being attached to you? Because if I wasn't, you would die. If your answer is no, then why are you doing the same thing with a fetus and a person that is pregnant? Why are you giving an undeveloped fetus, an undeveloped clump of cells, more rights than a human being, a fully formed human being. That's the thing that you don't understand. If just because detaching the, the, the fetus from the mother or the parent may cause the, the death of the fetus, I mean, that's just biology. That's just biology. Yeah, if that's the way it is, you know, that's the way it is, but you can't give more rights. Give you can't give more rights to an undeveloped clump of cells that isn't conscious, isn't sentient in any way. More rights than you would give a human being. 
That just doesn't make sense. So not only am I pro-choice, I'm pro-abortion. Like I said, we're perverts. I am a pervert, not, not a sexual pervert. Perverting things to use them in a way in, in which they are not intentionally or were intentionally designed to be used in. Using them in a way that suits you, that you see fit. So like I said, I'm a nihilist, so I don't think there's any inherent meaning or value in anything. So why not use them in a way that is that you see fit, that is actually beneficial and progressive? If we have the technology to stop unwanted pregnancies, then why don't we use it to its full fullest capabilities? You know, I'm not attached to these same moral values, these notions of, you know, religious fundamentalism and traditionalism. I'm not attached to these things. So, yeah, just if you don't want to have a kid, then just get an abortion. I'm a, like, why, why not? Using science to benefit us. Using science to pervert the universe. Sounds like a great fucking idea. You know, so people want to have kids, you know. People think that human life has some intrinsic value. It doesn't have intrinsic value. In fact, human life is born with intrinsic flaws you know stupid design you know so i just want to show you some uh some of the inherent biomechanical and uh you know neurological flaws in the human biology so you have a a narrow birth canal so you know the, the human the human biology the human head is so huge it's so big you know, to, to, you know, protect that brain, you know, that big brain that since we're bipedal, our birth canals, our pelvises are so narrow that when you're born, you have to be, your head and your skull has to be underdeveloped to even make it past your pelvis. Like that is, that is so obviously flawed. So, with that being said, humans are born helpless. They're born defenseless. They can't defend themselves because they have an underdeveloped brain. They have an underdeveloped skull. All right. And another one, you got an S-shaped spine. So, if you're born a member of the Homo sapiens sapiens species, you, you will have back problems. You will experience back pain. You know, due to our bipedalism. And with that being said, you will also experience knee pain. Your, your spine is shaped like an S. This is an, an anomaly in the animal kingdom. Right? Let's get another one. First of all, you have to eat. You have to eat a certain amount of nutrients and calories or you'll die, right? Specific profiles, a specific amount of specific nutrients. But you eat and breathe with the same hole to the point where a significant percentage of the population dies every year because of choking right another thing is the waste disposal and the fun factory are the same thing are you kidding me are you fucking kidding me you dispose you shit you have to excrete this 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 disgusting bacteria infested sludge out of your body every couple of days not only that you have to excrete this waste but the 
the mechanism that you use to excrete this waste is the same thing that you use for procreation, for reproduction, for having fun, for having sex, for fucking, man. It's the same thing. How stupid is that? Intelligent design, my fucking ass cheeks. Another thing, your neurochemistry, your neurochemistry is so, it's so behind, it's, it's so slow at adapting that we can, we've actually hacked our neurochemistry, right? We've created these, these processed, these, we've engineered these foods, these processed foods that contain a, a perfect amount of fat, sugar, and salt to make us chemically addicted to them. Because in the wild, you know, sources of fat, sources of sugar, and sources of salt were, were very, they're very rare, very scarce. So our brain adapted us to seek and crave these things, right? But now there's such an abundance of them that we we're still addicted to them and we just eat ourselves to death, all right? Another thing, we have cognitive biases, implicit biases that you have, that we all have, that we're not even aware of. We're not even consciously aware of these things. You have these biases, you know, these preconceived notions that affect decisions that you make and you're not even aware of them. You know, most people are not aware of them. Like we literally have to have mechanisms and methodologies to overcome these implicit cognitive biases so that we can, you know, be more logical, more rational, right? So that, that just, there's just some things, you know, I can go on and on. The list is way longer than this, but these are just a few things that, you know, you should just, you should examine and, you know, realize that, wow, you know, intelligent design, you know, that's a load of bullshit. And uh, human life doesn't have any, any intrinsic value. You know, it's not a gift. It's not great. It's not all fun and games like, you know, you like to people like to put it like to make it seem and these are things that you will as a human being have to uh endure so uh yeah so let me get this straight you're born without your consent then you're expected to meet the expectations of society then you're expected to live under capitalism then the fact that your parents could just not like you for no reason. You know, they can be a psychopath, a sociopath, or a narcissist. You know, then there's this notion that, you know, if you're poor, you're inferior to a rich person. You know, like, let's take, see, a, a, a poor, rich kid. So let's say you have two people, right? You have two weird people. On one hand, you have a poor, weird person. The poor weird person is looked at as, oh, look at this weirdo, look at this creep, look at this peeping Tom, pedophile, child molesting school shooter, you know? But on the other hand, you have the rich weird person, right? They're looked at as eccentric. They're looked at, looked at as quirky. Look how quirky and unique he is. Look at, look at how quirky and unique they are. They're so eccentric. They're so, uh, you know, they're so vibrant. Oh my goodness. They're so, they're so interesting. You know, that's the difference. So that, that's what you're, you're subjugated to when you're being born into this human society, right? Just some arbitrary made up social constructs it's not like they exist they just exist you know absent of, of, of a mind outside of, of minds of human minds they just they're they're made up the fact that you're statistically overwhelmingly more likely to be born poor which decreases your quality of life you know no one gives a shit you know to top all of this off you know all of these rules and constructs and concepts 
and society are based off the prerequisite that you give a fuck. You know, like, you hear, like, all of this talk of motivation and uh, self-discipline and, you know, willpower, you know. And all of this stuff is, like, all of this stuff is genetic, like, you know, they, they judge you off criteria that they try to make it seem like it's in your capabilities to control, right? They, they, they make it seem like, oh, you can control this thing. It's just totally not genetically predisposed, you know? It's like motivation... You know, persistence, tenacity, you know, your, your appearance, your athletic ability, your personality, that's genetic, you know, you know, they, they want to make all of these rules and laws. But they're not based on anything rational. They're not based on anything with any efficacy. You know, I think that if you want to make a just society, you know, I think some of the foundations of that society should be, you know, bodily autonomy, you know, informed, enthusiastic consent and well-being you know based a society off of the veil of ignorance you know basically how would you structure a society not knowing what role you would be in that society not knowing your race not knowing your socioeconomic background so how would you structure that society right and you know just the basic thought of if everyone in the world was about to do what I'm about to do would it be a good world would, would the world be a better place would it be a worse place right just basic principles like that because a lot of these other things they're not really like I said they're not really based on anything they're just mostly traditionalism and tribalism you know mob rule you know bunch of horse shit a bunch of arbitrary horse shit you know but what I don't understand is why I, I, well I do understand it I do know why but why do people have this inclination towards putting this unnecessary layer this extra layer of you know faith this this layer of unsupported beliefs you know beliefs not supported by evidence this notion of supernatural you know you know, I think it's because humans are afraid of not knowing they're afraid of not knowing they're afraid of the unknown they're afraid of not having an answer so instead of just admitting that they don't know they would rather make up an answer because it makes them feel comfortable but sometimes the most intellectually honest answer when you don't know something is i don't know you know and see the thing about it is whenever you you don't know an answer to something and you just make up one or just fill it up with any answer that you just make up right it's you're not allowing yourself to actually investigate what is likely true what is reasonably what you're reasonably justified or rationally justified in believing is tr likely true 
so what happens is see the thing about it is whenever you accept that an answer is true you stop looking for the correct answer because you think you have the correct answer and when your worldview is based off something that is false your actions comport to your beliefs your action your beliefs and form action so I don't understand why do you why do people feel this need to put this extra layer of something you know where in many cases in most cases there's not even a, a space to fill in with some type of unfalsifiable hypothesis, some type of unfalsifiable proposition. Because in many cases where people think that, oh, we don't know the explanation of this, we in fact do know the explanation. We do know why this thing happens, but they just, you know, don't want to investigate. They don't want to research. They don't want to read the evidence, look at the evidence. They don't understand the evidence. So they make up some straw man to, you know, keep their preconceived notion and their confirmation bias. Or they just fill it up with filling in with some unfalsifiable proposition like a god or, you know, or a supernatural or spirits or souls or something like that. And it really just takes out the actual you know the wonder of what all of this actually is it's, you know just takes out I mean it's pretty cool if you actually take the time to try to understand reality but um yeah that's it man done no I think euthanasia assisted suicide death with dignity i think that should be classified as a basic human right you know i don't think i'm not just talking about you know as a punishment no fuck that no i think it's, it's just like the abortion situation where i don't think that you know you should have to go to this black market under the table shady guy in a dark alley just to get a procedure that should be classified as basic human rights and basic health care you know just because a group of bigoted a group of a group of bigots you know with unfounded assertions making unfounded assertions that they want to control the autonomy of people you know fuck that that's bullshit you know i think you know, I think we should stop, we should just remove all of these taboos, basically, you know, implemented by religion. You know, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of baggage, and a lot of residual effect from religion that many people don't even realize. You know, a lot of these these types of traditionalist values, these traditional values that people subscribe to, they don't realize that there's no, uh, you know, rational justification. There's no empirical evidence supporting these claims. And so they just believe them. And not only do they believe them, they, they try to, you know, enforce them on other people. They try to assert them on other people they try to get them legislated right try to make turn them into laws to basically form a theocracy and it's not just you know the fact that oh you have to be religious no it's even people that aren't necessarily religious fundamentalists that still subscribe to these types of traditional regressive values you know you know, things that's, that's like, you know, for example, you know, that thoughts are 
you know, thoughts are a crime, you know, you think a certain way, that's a crime, you know, this so uh, sex, this whole, you know, uh, thing about, you know, sex, oh, it's a pure, you can't masturbate, uh, you know, circumcision, you know, circumcision, oh, we don't want people to masturbate, it's so wrong and immoral and impure, you know, I am vehemently against, I am vehemently, I am vehemently opposed to infant circumcision. You know, I think you, you should be able, you should let the child, you know, reach the age of reason, the age of consent to determine whether they want to, you know, have that procedure done or not. I think it's, it's disgusting. It's just infant, you know, genital, it's just infant genital mutilation. That's all it is. There's no health benefits to it. It's just religious horseshit. That's all it is. All right. You know, how, how arrogant, how, how immoral is that? You know, to force someone that doesn't want to live, that doesn't feel like they have a quality of life to continue to exist to massage your ego to you know what is the, what is the reason you know you're trying to assert your beliefs on other people and that that is i have a problem with that that's not rational you know and the thing about it your beliefs have no justification no evidence supporting it just a bald ass assertion you know, what does that do for the well-being of people? If they, if, if in the back of their head, they're thinking that, wow, even if my life gets to a point where I don't even want to continue to live, that because of the opinions of this group of people that just don't care, obviously, apparently don't care about the well-being of other people, that I have to continue to suffer just because of their opinions I don't where's the rationality in that where's the reason I don't you know that's just doesn't make any sense to me you know one thing I love about being an atheist and about being a skeptic is that you know I'm not beholden to these antiquated pronouncements these these doctrines that make pronouncements about how we should live or you know what is moral or what is right and wrong you know you know the beauty is in that is the liberation that we get the freedom that we get to actually explore these new concepts of you know philosophy you know you know the, we're basically we can develop our own uh, you know, methodology of, of how to live, what is, you know, a moral thing, you know, how should we live to, you know, uphold the well-being of thinking agents, right? We don't have to, you know, be subjugated to what some book says, right? I think that is that's what I that's what I live for you know scientific investigation exploration and discovering what is true about reality you know discovering facts about reality like I think that religion it it, it like it cheapens the the wonder the, the beauty of what all of this actually is the you know and how all of this works, the intricacies of it. And it just makes these pronouncements. It makes these simplified, you know, uh, the simplified view of everything, of all the universe and how the cosmos works. And I just don't think that, you know, people say, you know, if there's no God, you know, how do you find meaning? How do you have meaning in, in your life? And I think, you know, because I'm an atheist, that makes my life infinitely more meaningful because 
you know, I, I, we can actually, I can actually see, oh, it's not just that, oh, magic man just poofed everything into existence. No, it, you know, the laws of nature, you know, chemicals interacting, you know, billions of years of evolution via natural selection and random genetic mutations, changes in allele frequency over time. And just so many interesting things that you just don't get when you subscribe to religion, when you, you pretend that you have an answer. See, that's the thing, the most intellectually honest thing, the most intellectually honest answer you can give when you don't know something is that I don't know. That's it, you, you don't know. See, that's the thing, because when you admit, when you have the, the humility to admit that you don't know something, you give yourself the opportunity to actually explore. See, I, I like being proven wrong because you know what? You get to learn something. That is why I don't think you're actually living if you're not skeptically exploring. You're existing, but are you really living? You know, I just think that that notion of because you're an atheist, because you don't believe in a God, that that your life is meaningless. I that just doesn't doesn't make sense to me.